right, guys, what I want to kind of really ju- jump into real quick is is the importance of annual convention. Now, I know for a lot of you guys, you've already made a decision to get there, and this is going to provide value to you because I'm going to talk about how do you get the most from it. Um, when when you look at the interviews that take place, um, when you look at you know all the different podcasts that are out there, and I don't care if it's from West Coast, if it's from USA, America, uh, Tri-State, what you're going to find is this common thread, right? The common thread is most people that are interviewed, when they're asked, what's the biggest thing that took place that happened that elevated your career, that allowed you to go out there and, and reach this level of success? What you're going to see is a very common answer, and that is going to an annual convention. Now, I know for some, you're like, well, why is that? Like, I, okay, how did that make such a big difference? I want to talk about that, right? Um, I want to I I go through that. But I know for myself, when I got started in this business, I knew that I wanted to be a great duplicator. I wanted to be a great copycat. I understood that success leaves clues. And I wanted to get around people that that they could talk about what they did. And when I started to find a common thread, I would take that thread. And that's kind of how I, I weave that thread into uh, the blanket of my business, right? Where this was going to be what I built my business from. This was going to be a part of my DNA. I took that thread and I, and I built the patterns of my business from that thread. And and the thread that was so commonly heard that I heard over and over again was going to a big convention. Now for myself, when I got started, I was 19 years old, right? And and to give you some context to that, I had I had no money at all. In fact, I lived on my mom's couch. She had a two bedroom apartment in the city of Apple Valley, which had a suburb that they named it Felony Flats, not because of any other reason than the fact that there was a lot of people dying every night. Like there's a lot of felonies committed. So they just, it was just known in the community. The case, you know, it's called felony flats, right? So I lived there and um, in a complete hood, complete ghetto, right? And my brother had one bedroom. My mom had the other bedroom and I had the couch, right? Which now as I say that, I'm thinking like, maybe I wasn't the the favorite child, but but I got my license and and I, I you know, I was like, hopefully this thing works. I had a baby, that was like coming within like two weeks. In fact, the baby, you know, Peyton, now that's 15, she was born like two weeks after I got my insurance license. I was trying to find something out. I was just trying to figure it out, right? And thank God my cousin at a family barbecue just basically just opened up the conversation, told me about it. That's all he did. He's like, man, I was in mortgages. That's kind of falling out, right? Because this is back in 2007. He's like, I, you know, I kind of see what the writing on the wall. I'm joining a new, new industry that seems very lucrative. Um, it's created more seven figure incrementers than any other industry in the world. And on top of that, it seems like it's recession proof. And, and he started telling me about like how, if you help one family, what that would bring in as far as income. And I'm like, dude, like I'm definitely willing to give this a shot, especially the fact that as you break this all down, there's no risk. Like what do I got? What's the risk? Get a license. Like there's no risk. I'm in. So I got, I got going now. The right when I got my license, they had a summer sales conference that was taking place in August. My license came through in July. Okay. And, um, and I'm thinking like, dude, I, I, I'm, I haven't even made my first run of phone calls really. And I've already got to make this decision to get there. Cause it's two weeks away. And I'm like, I can't go. I got no money. And I got a baby that that's just getting born. Like, like the baby, like, I, I mean, I can't go. I, I had all these reasons that I, I could easily justify and say, I can't go. And the reality is like, they're better than most people's. And so I could have easily, you know, told whoever, and then they maybe, you know, would have made me feel like they weren't judging me. Like, dude, I had a baby, you know, but then I didn't push the baby out, but I still, you know, I was a part of it, right? The baby's born. Um, and I, and I don't have any money. Like I'm 19, don't have any money. So I, I had a lot of, I guess, justifiable reasons to lean on. But somebody told me, they said, man, listen, and it was, it was one of my old mentors. He said, dude, listen, if, if, if you knew without a shadow of a doubt, that you're going to find massive success in this industry. Like, like you're going to create great success. Like your families, your kids' kids will be forever different from what you do here. But there's certain things that have to happen to make that come to pass. And those things, if they don't happen, that won't happen. Like just like baking a cake or something else, like some, some things just have to happen. It's not like, well, just leave it out, hope for the best. He said, listen, he said, annual convention, he said, I promise you, if you don't go, the odds of the, the success that without a shadow of doubt, if you could believe it was going to happen, but you had to get there, what would hold you back from getting there? And I was like, I don't, I don't, I don't know if anything would be. He said, like, why don't you pretend like there's a suitcase, you know, full of money 
like a ton of a ton of it. And if you fly out there, you could just grab it. He's like, that's that's what you're going to learn. And, and he broke it down. And he started getting into more detail and he was nonstop about it. I remember it being like a 45 minute conversation, but I was very receptive because he was where I wanted to be. Now, in the back of my mind, to be honest, I thought like, I wonder if this dude's getting, and this is just to be honest, I said, oh, I wonder if he's getting like a ticket sale for this pitch because those, th that conference did, did cost, it was like 800 bucks. And I thought, well, like, who cares if he does or not? Like, I mean, he, he's pretty committed. Like he's, he's, he's found success. He says, this is now with family first life, it's free, right? It's free. And be clear. If you're like, Paul, are you trying to sell me on going to annual convention? Look, yes, yes, I am. <laughs> yeah, I, I actually am absolutely trying to do that because I want you to, I want you to win. And I know, and by the way, it's free. So you can't even think about it. Like, he got, it's free. There's no, I mean, it doesn't cost anything to get there, but, but I just, I, I listened. And I think one of the first things, and this could be a, a separate point as far as maybe to address or to write down, but coachability, man, coachability is one of the fundamental attributes that are, that's necessary to elevate to a level that you're not currently at because only to get to a, a level that you're not at, you have to be working from a thought process that you're not, that you don't currently hold on to. So if I want to go here and I'm here, I got to work off a thought process of here because the thought process of here has got me right here. Now I can hear a thought process here, but if I lack coachability, I'm not going to take the action to get there. I'm not going to take the action of what I've heard and only the action will produce the desired outcome at that new higher level. So I understood when he started breaking it down, he gave me all the reasons He's like, man, you're going to be able to hear this and this. And he, like, if you just learn how to go out and sell one more annuity a month from the advanced market sales training, what does that bring in for income? And I'm going through, I'm like, dude, like by the end of the conversation, I was like, I have to go. And to me, I almost look at it like if, if I, it, it became so valuable to get there now, because I, I, I had no plan B. So if you're on your, you're like, well, dude, um, I just think no, it doesn't work. I've got a master's in nursing. I'm going to go be a nurse or wh whatever it is. Right. And you're like, and I, and I kind of like it. I enjoy being a nurse. And you're like, uh, so I'm kind of tiptoeing. Well, for one, I just tell you nothing, nothing ever is going to happen. Good tiptoeing. Like something that would absolutely work will never work if you're just tiptoeing, right? But but if you're like, it's no big deal. Well, then I get if if it's harder for you to kind of come. But for me, I had no plan B. There was absolutely nothing else out there that was going to produce the fruit that this had the possibility to produce. So to me, it was like, this has to work, which I thank God that I was in that situation because I might not have been so coachable. I might not have been so willing to sacrifice. I might not have been so willing to get uncomfortable and step out of my, my, my thought process and always be trying to chase somebody else's that had gone forward and, and it was where I wanted to be. And maybe I, I wouldn't have, maybe I wouldn't have done that. But what I'm saying is this guys, like if, if you want it to be a, a new year, it, you, you got to create a new you. That's the way you see. And that's the way you see things. You think about things, you feel about things. Right. And, and see, you only can transform the your, your mind. You can only transform by the renewing of your mind if you get it around a higher thought process. And so, so he broke it all down. I'm like, dude, this makes perfect sense. And so, yes, I had a baby come. Yes, I had no money. He said, Paul, how did you figure it out? I can tell you this much. The moment you make a decision and you commit, it just shows. The moment you said, man, I'm going to drive. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to get there. The keys just kind of show up. I don't know where the keys are at. Make a decision, a commitment that you're going to be there, that you're going, you're taking action at all costs, no matter what, you'll figure it out. When you do that, all of a sudden, call it the universe, call it whatever you want to call it, right? All of a sudden, ding, 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 the keys are there. The keys are in your hand. And so what I knew to be true is this. Once I make a decision and say I'm committed to going there, that, that came about. Well, see, Paul, how did you do it? I had a snowboard. Now, be clear. I know it sounds petty. But like that was, that's what I did. I loved it. That was my hobby. I was 19. I love snowboarding. I sold my snowboard. And then my mom, which I'm still not sure how she came up with the money because, you know, I praise God through this business and, and the fact that it's worked out so well. I mean, I've, I've, I've taken care of, bought her a house, bought her a car. Um, in fact, Casey, the other day she came in, she said, uh, she was listening to advanced market sales training. 
And she said, um, she said, I know what you are. I said, a man. <laughs> what, what does that mean? She said, no, you're, you're my annuity. And I was like, yeah, you know, I'm glad I thank God that I can be. Yeah. Cause she makes like 700 bucks a month on disability. You can't live off that. And I'm able to give her a monthly income every single month, you know? Um, but my mom was still on social security then 15 years ago, disability. I'm thinking like, where did she come up with the money? Now I've never, I ne I've never asked her because I don't, I'm kind of scared <laughs> what her response will be. But what I'm saying is that it just show like, I just figured it out. Right now, this is the thing I want to tell you guys. Procrastination is an, it's like taking out an insurance policy against your success. I kind of started the call by saying, Hey, persistency is essential, man. Like, what are you persistent about? Write that down. And is, is that what you're persistent about? What matters most? Cause if it's not, maybe you shift what you're persistent about, but you've heard like, you know, persistency is the insurance policy against failure. I believe that procrastination is the insurance policy you take out against your future success. Because the longer you wait to do something, the less likely you are to ever do it. And then when you do take that action and do it, the, the level of performance is so much lower because of how you negated and delayed the level of value placed on it was really kind of dwindled by the fact that you put it off. So, so what I could tell you is this, everything in your mind, right? What's going on in your brain? Like it takes a mental capacity. The goal is, and I think everybody's brain by nature, you know, it, it, it's trying to automate things. It's trying to, to create patterns. It's trying to make things, you know, simpler so you could free up that space so you could focus on something different, right? For me, coachability allowed that to take place. It just did. It allowed me to, it allowed that, that, that to take place. Because now I didn't have to spend energy and emotion on that thought. I could say, all right, you got my best interest. This makes sense. It's a no-brainer. I don't know why I didn't think about it. Because I, honestly, I, I don't know why I didn't think about it in the first place. But once it was explained, all of a sudden I was like, yeah, got it. Makes sense, right? And, and so th when I made the decision, right when I had that conversation, I didn't keep thinking about it. I was able to shift my energy and emotion to something different, i.e. going out there and help more families. Help more, help more people, right? And so, so my suggestion, if if there's anything I could tell you guys, right, to make this the biggest year yet, is is to get registered for the convention, buy your plane ticket, figure it out. You don't have to have it all figured out as far as what it looks like, but just get that going. Put this the, in your calendar. Get a plane ticket. Show yourself you're committed to getting there. And by the way, I can promise you this much: if there's two people, right? So there's two people. One person, it's easy for them to get the conference, right? They've, they've got the cash flow. It's no big deal. The other person, it's kind of like, oh, dude, they, they really, they, they could pick up a lot of excuses of why they can't get there. And it makes sense. The person that goes that the odds are stacked against them, they're going to come out with a higher level of identity that, man, I'm an overcomer. I just casted a big vote for myself that says, dude, this is going to be a big year, Right. Like I like somebody that's gone through something because on the other side of that big something is character, is identity, is man, I ain't scared. I'm I'm full of faith. Like I've been through some stuff, right? So so when you have to get go through some stuff to get there, maybe it's fine, whatever it is, which is uncut, but whatever it takes place to get there, and you get there, when you come out, man, your your odds of of taking more from that event, the odds of you seeing yourself in such a way that's gonna line up with your who goals, who you are, and, and that's gonna lead to you you know, really executing and producing those, those do goals. This is what I want to have. This is what I want to accomplish. Oh, it's a lot more higher. It's a lot, a lot more higher. So guys, this is applicable. And you say, well, I'm already going to conference. How is this applicable? Or for one, this is applicable to everything. When, when you hop on a podcast, are you intentionally leaning in and taking notes? Right now I had this person say, he said, man, you've done this for 15 years. When, when you get on a podcast, fair to say that you've heard it before. I'm like, yeah, for, yeah, for the most part. He said, well, what, what, what are you taking from it? I said, for one, man, I, I need to be reminded. Like, I, like, I've heard it, but me hearing it or knowing it and then doing it at the highest 10 level, there, there's a big difference there. And, and I have to hear it to be reminded of it to be able to kind of ask myself, where am I at with this? 
Am I at a six, seven? Man, I'm, I'm, I'm dropping the ball. This is important. So how can I get it to a 10? So, so, so the, for one, that that's essential. But I said the other thing is this. A lot of times when I'm watching somebody communicate and talk, if I've heard it before, I'm looking at how they're delivering it. I'm looking at their thought process and how they articulate and put it together. Because I'm trying to figure out how to go out there and elevate that as well. So if you're building a business, you're like, oh, I already got this, man. I already, I'm, already, I'm already going. I'm a manager. Well, pay attention to the way it's delivered and how it's articulated, right? And that's, that's always being in a position to be a student and figure out how to tweak, adjust, grab things, modify things, and get things that much better, right? I can tell you this much. Um, you know, when I went to conference uh, my first year, what I left with was this belief that, yeah, me too. Like, I could do this thing. When I went in, I, I got to be honest, I, I was consumed with doubt and fear. I was in a very tough spot um, where I just wanted some hope because I didn't really see how I was going to provide for the family for four years because I thought I was convinced once I had my degree, then uh, I was going to be able to do that, but I didn't have one yet. And when I got there, I saw people that were like me that that had that had created success and that had told me how they did it that told me how they felt when they started, which made me feel like, okay, maybe this feeling isn't doesn't mean I'm not going to be successful. Maybe this is just a feeling I'm going to have to get past. And I started to to connect with all these stories and people. And I left thinking like, man, I can do this thing. Like, I believe I can do it. I believe that there's people that are in this company that want to help me out. And there was a ton of them, right? There's the practice company. There It wasn't the best structure as far as comp, renewals, all that kind of stuff. But some really good people that were there that really cared to help out. And that would say, hey, man, let me let me kind of give you some perspective on this. Maybe see it like this. And all those things made a difference, right? All those things made a massive difference. I remember, you know, going there and, and having a thought process of like, man, maybe I could just, I need to save some, some, I, how much, how much can I, how little can I spend on leads and still try to hit my goal? And I go to conference and say, dude, like you got to stack the deck, man. Like think about the anxiety that you have, if, if I say, if you hit, make three shots, I'm going to pay you big time, this big check, but you only got three shots. You're going to be like, shoot, dude, you, you know, or if you only have four shots, you miss one shot, you're freaking out. These other ones, these other ones got to go in. But I said, what if you've got a hundred shots, man, the pressure just goes off. And now you could be really more inclined to, to be the doctor and the client to be the patient because they don't need you or you don't need them. They need you. Because you have so many more to call. So what does it matter? It's no big deal, right? And, and I started to learn these different processes. I remember going to a conference and, and hearing Mark Mead speak. And, and he talked about how he went out there and helped over 400 families. I think it was 500 families, really the first year with FFL. And he talked about how he used the weekends to really set himself up for success. And, and I got out of there thinking like, man, the benefit, the, the multiplier of working the weekend, I mean, I could almost work th three days less than the weekdays if I just picked up one weekend. That's how much, as he broke down the numbers, went through it. And, and I left that event deciding to run the weekends. And over the next, you know, I guess five straight years, it hit Hall of Fame because of what I, what I was exposed to there, right? I remember listening to Sean talk about this at, at conference and going through just like, you know, this statement of, and I remember him saying, and I wrote it down. He said, um, he said, next time you think you've got an issue, ask yourself, do I have terminal cancer? Because there's somebody out there battling terminal cancer and they would love to trade shoes with you. And I thought like, man, dude, like that's how I got to look at this stuff to build gratitude and appreciation because my performance is never going to go above my level of appreciation for the thing I'm holding on to. So, so if I can realize that, man, this ain't that big of a deal, I, man, it is what it is. Like I'm blessed that I'm in this position. And I started to get different perspectives and started to identify and come up with these new things that, you know, new philosophies, like, man, this doesn't happen, you know, to me, it happened for me. How can I use this? And I'd, I'd write those things down, man. And I would review it and, and it changed my whole philosophy of how to build a business and live my life, you know, because my, my, my upbringing, I don't know about yours, but my upbringing was like. You know, my family getting around and um, watching soap operas and playing dominoes, you know, <laughs> like watch my family do that. And, and uh, a lot of it was just like, you know, just 
complaining and blaming and just stuff like that is what I was exposed to. Like it's that fault, it's this conditions, that situation, if that didn't happen, if because that happened, this is why this happened, all that stuff, which will hold you bound and chained to the spot you want to leave, right? And so, so, so as I got exposed to, it, I started thinking differently. Man, it makes sense. It makes sense. It makes sense. See, for me, as I got out of high school, I realized one thing: as hard as I could study, if I sat next to the right person on test day, I get a better test score because I could just look and see. And here, this business, the best copycat wins, and you can copy, and you can copy now. How, how should you go into this conference? Well, I think, man, you should go into this conference with the expectation that this is going to be the turning point for you, right? It's going to be an experience. You're going to, you're going to be exposed to the best in the industry, breaking down what they're doing and how they're doing it. You know, you're going to be exposed to that. I was talking to this guy at a meeting on, uh, on Tuesday in, in Costa Mesa. And uh, I said, you play any sports in high school? He said, I played soccer. I said, did you ever want to be pro? He said, yeah. I said, honestly, I mean, when you're younger and as you get older, you're probably like, I don't know if it's going to work out. I said, did you ever think you were going to go pro? He's like, yeah, I kind of did when I was a kid. I said, so if you thought you were going to go pro, like what if there was like, if it was Messi and Neymar um, and, and uh, what was it, Beppe? Is it Beppe? Or, well, Pele, I mean, that'd be weird because he's dead. Um, you know, God rest his soul to do with a beast, right? But um. But yeah, let's just say it was Pele. Like Pele was there too, right? And 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 it's a camp, and they're gonna go through um, everything, like what they do, how they do, what they've learned, some techniques that have made a massive difference, what their schedule was, what their regiment was, like everything for three days. And you believe that that was gonna be your ticket to freedom, that there was nothing else that was gonna work but that. That was it. I said, and it was free. I said, would there be anything that would get in your way from going there? He's like, oh, dude. And this is this what he said. He said, hell no. I would definitely be there. I said, okay, well, what's up with conference? And he said, well, man, I got a, I got a baby coming. I was like, me too. It's having me. Right. And, uh, and, and I broke it down for him. I said, but dude, like, what if the baby's coming in? Would you still go? If you knew like, Hey, this is how you're going to provide for your baby. He's like, I would go. I said, man, how's this any different? In fact, this is, this is a lot more magnified because the odds you become a pro at soccer, like what are the odds? You know what I mean? But you look at how many people have seen success here. I mean, integrity partners, right? How many Hall of Fame producers? Like, you know, it's not a, a physical skill set or genetically gifted. You, you don't have you don't have to have that. So I said, but you get to get around the best people in the industry, and they're going to tell you what to do. He's like, well, you put it that way. I was like, well, dude, that's how you want me to put it, man. That's the way it is. But but the environment, guys, this is this is gonna this will dictate your success. Like, see, I do believe. I believe without a doubt that every person has a seed of greatness in them. I think God created you. You were created by a loving God that created you with skill sets and, and giftedness that, that, that other people don't have. I do believe that everybody was, was created to go out there and serve one another, to love one another. I mean, it's like, it's like the, the second greatest commandment, right? To love your neighbor. Like that's a big deal, right? And when you look at this business, really it centers around just loving and caring for people. Like if I love and care enough about my client, I'm going to serve them and help them out. And if I really love to serve people and love my neighbor, man, I want to go out there and work nonstop and sacrifice all the things that don't matter that much to do more of that. God created you with that. Man, I want to go out there and, and love my neighbor and show them the opportunity of family first life to get, let them be exposed to this great opportunity that could transform their life if they do the work and step into it. Man, I, I want to love them by giving them that opportunity. Well, well, you were created with that. You were created. Everybody was. That's why when I look at this, it's like, man, you just really got to go out there and love people enough. And that's the foundation, man. You'll sacrifice the time. You'll put the energy and the emotion. You'll do the things. You'll invest the resources, right? And, and see, that's what this is about. So, so when, you, when you put yourself in an environment and when you step in, that seed of greatness that's in you, man, I, I, I want to walk through the door. And if that seed of greatness, man, it needs some sunlight, man, maybe it needs some miracle grow, some water or whatever, man, I want to go in where, boom, all that stuff's going on at the same exact time. And that's what's going to happen in, in this environment. See, people make big decisions, true commitments when the environment's set right. I love what Trey says. He says, you ever been, you ever been to a bar and, uh, 
And he says, you ever been to church and had like a shot of tequila at church, like a double shot? And they, most people are like, no, I haven't. You always get one weird one that's like, yeah, I snuck it in. But, but you know, you typically know. Or, or have you ever gone to to a bar and you look over and everybody's drinking, this person's on the, the, the floor, you know, praising God. They got their hands up. They're worshiping on with AirPods. Like, that, that typically didn't happen either, right? So what I'm saying is like, you know, the, the, the thing is this. You typically do based off the environment what it's set for when you go to convention maybe you haven't made choices you haven't behaved in a way that shows that you're committed that you could be successful that this is going to be your career your year but you go to that environment man and now you hear the stories you see what to do you become knowledgeable more wiser on how to do it you learn about advanced market sales you see the schedule you become you'll have a hot moment a hot moment a hot moment like all this insight that's hitting you Man, that seed is getting, it's getting taken care of. It's getting watered. It's getting fertilized, right? And now all of a sudden, you start making decisions and commitments that you normally wouldn't have made. You say, man, I'm committed, right? It's kind of like typically you don't make a big change until something gets so low that you're just kind of sick and tired of being sick and tired, right? I mean, look at the Israelites, you know, in the Bible, like, whether it was, you know, exiting Egypt, wandering in the wilderness, going to the promised land. Like, it's just this pattern of, like, following God and then thinking that, it's, it, hey, it's, it's them, and then disobeying, falling away from them. And, it's just, and then they get so low because they were worshiping other gods, whether that's money, resource, whatever it is. And then and they finally like, all right, this sucks. Like, this is terrible. Like, we, we've, we've got, everybody's got a family. Like, and, the, and they look back up. And they see, right, it's it's the same thing. So only when it gets so bad do you typically look for something new, look to a new belief system, a new thought process, a new action, or through repetition, a message. See, when you get there, you're going to be, you'll have some perspective of like, man, it could get so good. And, you know, I'm not going to keep living at this level. Maybe I built some complacencies. Maybe I built some comfortabilities here, but man, no, 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 I'm going to go after it. I'm going to go after it. This is my year. And that's where that takes place because you're now aware of what's before you, what you could do, right? And that you can do it. And the repetition of message throughout the week, man, you'll have all of a sudden this, this, this commitment to going out and investing in the right amount of leads maybe for the first time because you heard it over and over and over again. And the repetition of message got you to think like, all right, I'm going to stop doing this. I'm going to start, I'm going to start doing that. I'm going to stop convincing myself I've been doing that, but I'm going to actually, I'm going to actually do it. Right. And it makes a massive difference. There's a story where, um, and I can't remember who it was, it was a scientist that they basically take these stem cells and um, it's something crazy, like the stem cell uh, multiplies something inordinate, you know, every minute or whatever. And after like so many hours, it's like 10,000 of the exact same stem cells coming from this this parent stem cell. So they put it in three Petri di dishes and they change the environment, right? They change the environment of these Petri dishes. And what takes place is one cell becomes like like a bone uh, cell one becomes like a fat cell, one becomes like you know, muscle cell, something like that. But they're all three different. How did the exact same cell become some, something so different? It was the environment. And see, that's what this will do for you the environment. I remember my daughter one time, you know, we had her in cheer until she was like, I think she's like seven, and we, we switched it to soccer. Praise God. Um, nothing against you know, any cheer dads or moms out there, but but you know, my daughter was she was really good, so she was in the senior co ed five. You know, and um, so she was cheering with like 17 and, and 18 year olds. And I remember her, um, she came, she came home from cheer one day, cheer practice. And she, she had a question. She said, Hey dad, got a question for you. At cheer today, girls were talking about this. I wanted to know what it was. Dad, what's twerking? I said, huh? And that's always the best way you could respond. Like you just act like you didn't hear them because it gives you some time to think. I was like, what? She said, yeah, dad, what's twerking? I said, sweetie, that, that's, that's an activity that kills, you know, young kids across the country on a daily basis. <laughs> like, you don't want to do that. But what I realized is like, you know, your, your surroundings and your environment, it's going to influence your language and what you say. And see, maybe for the first time ever, you're going to get around, and I know it was for me, without a doubt, it was the first time ever I was around that many people that had found success. It was the first time I, read, I was around that many people that had found success. And, and so all of a sudden, my vocabulary started to change. 
and what I believed started to change, right? So a couple of tips as we wrap up to get the most out of convention, guys, make sure you're present. You know, go there and uh, and, be, and be there. Like there's going to be distractions taking place. There'll be things, you know, going on. Um, you know, you, you they've got like chili cheese fries or something. They're probably selling at one of those stands. that you are like, man, I'm hungry. I'm going to go eat that. What I'm saying is just be planful, be intentional. Like pre-decide when you get there. Like even when you're going to go take a bathroom break or something. Like look at the agenda because you don't know what you're going to miss. By the way, when you tell yourself and you do those things, it shows yourself that you're really serious about getting the most from it, which means you're going to get the most from it. But go in with some questions planned out. We got the scavenger hunt, man. Be intentional with, hey, I, I, I want to make sure I can reach out to this person. And if you're like, Paul, I'm having a hard time finding that person or whatever, just shoot me a text message. I'll, I'll, I'll reach out to them. I got a relationship with all with everybody, all you know, all the managers and VPs, board members, Hall of Fame producers, and I can reach out and make sure that you guys can connect with them and you can get those questions answered. But guys, my goal is to serve you. Like this convention is supposed to serve you. It's for you. It's not for anybody. It's for you. It's for you to finally get what you want. That's what it is. And so when you go into it, pre-decide that you're going to be present. You're going to take notes. You know, as you take notes, my suggestion to go through it is, is anything that you feel like, hey, this is something I need to take action on, put an A next to it. If you say, man, this is something I want to change, right? I want to change this about my business, about my schedule, my routine, about what I'm doing, about what I'm thinking, put a C next to it. If it's something you want to teach, maybe you got a team, you say, man, I got to teach this. Like, this is good. I need to talk more about this with my team. Put a T next to it. So I call it act, right? So act your way through your notes to action, change, and teach, right? But and then I late at night, go through it and review them. Late at night, go through and put together your reasons, your why. You know, what's your drive, your purpose, your passion? You know, why are you going to go out there and sacrifice? This year's going to require great sacrifice if you want great results. That's a fact. Nothing worthwhile is going to happen by default. Everything great that takes place is based off of intentionality. And so it's going to take sacrifice. Go Late at night, as you're in that, that environment that, that really kind of starts building you up, you start thinking different, exposed to different belief systems, all those things. Late at night, my suggestion is go to your bag of reasons. Add some reasons to your bag of reasons. Build yourself up and set yourself up that you're, you're, you, you've got that burning desire coming out of there to actually sacrifice what's necessary to get after those goals that you've got. It's going to take great sacrifice. Build passion. See, the thing that takes place there is, man, passion will start to burn. The passion to go out there and get after something. And you only know what you're really passionate about based off of the level of sacrifice that's tied to it. So if your passion goes up, your sacrifice will go up, man. You, it'll be easier to say no to the things that you know you've been saying yes to that have gotten you distracted. It'll be easier to, to not let all this extra time go to things that matter least, right? One of the things that I had coming to a conference was just this awareness of like, man, I got to make every minute matter. I want no extra time left. So I'm driving between appointments. Man, what am I doing? Early in the morning, what am I doing? What's the first thing I should tell myself in the morning? Today's going to be a great day. What's the first thing I should do in the morning? What's my first discipline in the morning? What should I be doing late at night? When should I be, you know, scheduling and making sure I'm intentional with the kids? What should I be talking about with the kids? What is that conversation? What I realized is that, man, I, I got to be intentional. If I want success, not just in one area, but success as a parent, as, 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 a, as a spouse, right, in this business, if I want to be successful in all those areas, I've got to make sure I'm intentional in my time. And I left with that. So, guys, I can tell you this much. As you look at, if you, as you look at the agenda, the agenda is stacked. I've been to a lot of conventions. Every one of them, to me, has been life-changing. That's the truth numerically to support that subjective statement is objectively March has been our biggest month every year forever. I could show you the numbers every month of March is the biggest month, not because of anything other than the fact that it's a month after conference. Why is that? And numbers are tied to income and in, to, to all the agents and to the managers. It's a big deal. It's a big deal. This is, this is the time. Right now, if you're on the fence, somebody told me one day, they said, the only thing you get on the fence is like thorns up your butt cheeks and stuff. And nobody likes those. <laughs> so, so get, oh, get off the fence, man. Get off the fence. Just, just jump. It's going to take a jump for you to get something different. Don't think it's just going to feel good. Just don't think it's going to be easy. It ain't going to be right. 
It ain't going to be. Get there. Put yourself in a position where you're the story that says, man, I had all this stuff going on, but I still got there. That's a person that, man, I'll, 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 I'll invest my time, energy, resources, income. I'll, I'll do whatever I can to help you win. The person that doesn't, I love you, but I absolutely will not at all. Not time, energy, money, resource, nothing. Because you got to bet on yourself. You got to figure it out. Like this ain't going to be easy. And if this, if you can't get to a free event, get a plane ticket in a hotel, like what are we talking about, guys? Guys, let's make this the biggest year. It's up to you. And it starts with this one decision. This is a cornerstone habit. And if you've already made the decision, again, this goes to what you do on, on, on a personal, on a daily basis with your personal growth and your business development, taking notes and all the stuff that you do on the podcast. But also think about this. Most of you on here want to build a business. The best thing you could do to, to launch your business into 2023 is get more people there. We've got like five different people I've spoken to the last couple of days. Because again, this has been all I've been focused on. Because I know how big of a deal it is and how, how much it matters. There's like five different people that have people going to conference. Because I was just like, dude, this is the best way to get them going. It's free. Why don't you tell them that there's a ticket for free? You've got them. You're like, hey, I took care of your ticket. We're going to go watch Alex Rodriguez, Damon John, um, Jocko Willink, Dave Anderson. We're going to watch them speak. They'd probably want to go to that. Why would they not if it's free? Because that would cost a lot of money. And oh, by the way, there's also going to be this insurance thing being talked about too. And a bunch of people killing it. And you should listen to them also. But like it's a free event. So just talk to people. Start start reaching out. This, the next couple of weeks, guys, will be the most important couple of weeks of your career as far as your ability to launch this year. Because everything that's going on this week, as far as people expose the opportunity, you can expose them to the national convention. You can get them to that national conference. And that will absolutely give them the right level of belief to withstand um, any kind of storms, adversity struggles as they go along throughout the year to get to the goals that they want to accomplish. So guys, I hope this helps. I'm looking forward to meeting you. Please come up if I've not shook your hand before, giving you a hug. Um, I, I like to hug. So like, come up, I want to hug you, get to know you and uh, let's make this a massive year and let's expect for it to be an unbelievable conference and an unbelievable year. Make it a big week. Stay strong. Be steadfast. Take care.